Maryland City is under state of emergency after Bill O'Reilly slanders for disaster. <laughs> My name is Donna. You should do an analysis of Philip DeFranco. Oh, you beautiful bastard. Phil's approach to reporting the news counters the familiar format of mainstream media. On the surface, this may make it seem like it would lead to his channel's failure due to the fact that it diverts from the already proven successful news model. However, it's clear to see when looking at his analytics how his show has impacted an audience that is sometimes far greater than many mainstream media outlets. Meanwhile, they see me, just some schmuck with an editor in the past 30 days, getting 37 million views. Their average time on site is supposed to be around two minutes, ours is eight minutes plus. I mean, that could make you feel like garbage if you're someone that looks more outward than inward. That then leaves the question, despite not following a winning news model, how has Phil created something so successful? To really understand how DeFranco has persevered, we need to look at mainstream news stations. When you look at the presentation of mainstream news, you realize a lot of them are similar. Reporters are often dressed in suits or business attire, giving the illusion of authority, professionalism, and importance. This phenomena is similar to that of the white lab coat effect, where individuals judge how much authority you have based on what you wear. Although your local news is dependent on your region in the US, the accent they speak in is the same. News reporters from the South speak exactly the same as news reporters from the West Coast. It's news at 11 a.m. I'm Philip Palmer. And I'm Leslie Sykes, and we are getting a clearer picture of what happened inside that Texas church. Monday is Memorial Day, but here's something you may not know. It was originally called Decoration Day because of the tradition of decorating graves with flowers. This is deliberately done so the message is understood at a national level, but it makes for hilarious commentary when reporters mess up and you hear them speaking normally. What really happened on that Thursday here at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death? The fuck is that? Shit! I'm dying in this fucking country ass fucked up town. Philip DeFranco also has a deliberate presentation for his show. Serving as an homage to how he started, the set for his show takes place in what seems to be a regular home office or bedroom. Behind the scenes, you can see that DeFranco is actually in a larger space, an office or studio. Okay, just as an update, as I'm editing this, Phil puts out a tweet that says, moving to the new office on Friday, pretty much everything except the part of my office that is on camera has been moved to the new studio. So ready, excited for this, Thank you for being with me on this ride. Oops, read that wrong. His dress code seems to be business casual, often wearing button-up shirts, but he isn't afraid to go full casual on some days. To me, his setup gives an essence of professionalism mixed with regular guy. You'd think that not going full-on professional would discredit him, aka just wear the suit and get the studio background, but it doesn't. YouTube being the medium, a lot of viewers become dedicated fans to someone because of personality. You notice human quirks in these vlog-style videos that make you see the creator as more human than these polished suits that talk funny. I'm so pale. You're on it. Today, snow is crippling much of the Washington lowlands. One of three inches of snow fell in Seattle and other areas. In fact, going too professional sometimes makes viewers lose interest in a creator because it seems like they've lost their humanness. For example, a comedy slash opinion channel that comments on news in a humorous way called Just Kidding News stepped up their production game by moving their set to a more news-like setting. They still kept their comical vibe in the set design, but viewers still felt like the change was too much like TV and they didn't like it. The crew ended up shooting back at their old office, holes in the wall and all. DeFranco understands this YouTube trope and designed his show with that in mind. This is someone you know or can get to know by the backlog of old videos. Some very cringy videos, yes, but that's what personalizes the whole experience for viewers. What really do you know about this reporter and would you really care if he got replaced? A good amount of profit is based on ad revenue. And there are other things like subscriptions and donations. So this is me explaining things at the most basic sense. Basically, Ford, a company like Ford pays X News Network for money. A company like Ford pays X News Network for airtime, and this is how the network profits. 
Phil is paid in a similar fashion, but the ads are through YouTube. And this format may lead to his downfall. Ultimately, YouTube acts as a sales team and chooses what ads go where. Zoella gets everyone trying to sell lipstick, Casey Neistat gets people who are interested in filmmaking, and so forth. Unfortunately, according to YouTube's advertiser-friendly content guidelines, one topic that is not advertiser-friendly and can cause demonetization are videos that talk about controversial issues and sensitive events. They have this in what's not considered appropriate. Controversial or sensitive subjects, even if graphic imagery is not shown. How are you supposed to cover news? Pretty much any time we talk about a natural disaster, it's not thumb and title. We try and get people to donate money to help. How, what? Yeah, looking through these videos, a lot of people were saying, yeah, maybe it's just the tags. Some of the videos being hit don't even have anything that could be construed as offensive in the tags. This appears to be a straight attack on the content of the video. I was kind of hoping those people were right. This could be the beginning of something horrible where I'm just, I'm like, I'm literally worried if this video is going to be shut down. Thankfully, DeFranco has fought against this by selling his merch, attaining sponsorships, using affiliate links, Links and fan funding on Patreon. He is also engaging an audience outside of YouTube through his app DeFranco Now. Information in mainstream news follows a formula. The information seems objective, but how the questions are framed follows a partisan. Fox News can lean more right while CNN leans more left. This isn't something that's surprising. It's one of the first things you learn in school when you start learning how to research a topic. Despite everyone who has gone through middle school slash junior high knowing this, mainstream media continues to be lucrative. The reality is money isn't made by covering both sides and revealing the truth. It's made by clicks, views, and sensationalism. Dividing the audience into left and right leaning keeps them watching their preferred network. The stories may anger people, but the networks rarely do. And if it did, you could just change the channel. Before I move on, I want to say there is completely no unbiased news source. As long as advertisers are the companies that keep these things afloat, reporters will always report the news in a way that doesn't lose them money. Though nothing is truly unbiased, I believe DeFranco comes close. He counters how mainstream media presents information by presenting both sides, and then his opinion. Roseanne Barr then eventually ended up deleting that tweet. Later tweeting, I apologize, I am now leaving Twitter. I apologize to Valerie Jarrett and to all Americans. I am truly sorry for making a bad joke about her politics and her looks. I should have known better. Forgive me, my joke was in bad taste. And obviously this part is my opinion, and I say this as someone that on this show has defended comedians many times, I don't know if that was really a joke. But with all of that said, I do want to pass the question off to you. What is your takeaway from this situation? Did you see this as a bad joke that didn't land, or is this just an example of racism? He humanizes the whole experience, but presenting things in an unbiased way can have its disadvantages. Sometimes you're not going to agree with him, and he states this over and over again. In contrast to mainstream media, where most people agree on what's being reported, Phil risks his business by stating his opinion. As I stated before, a lot of his income is fan-funded, his merch, and Patreon. If viewers hear something they don't like, it may be possible they stop supporting him financially. In spite of me naming these financial challenges, DeFranco succeeds. And he succeeds because of something simple. Trust. But trust isn't easily gained from someone behind a screen. DeFranco first gains trust by showing the reality of the situation and how things aren't always black and white. All these sites came out of the woodwork saying Felix is a racist, he's an anti-Semite, he's a Nazi. In that video making commentary that the YouTube Heroes program is like Nazi youth. That YouTube Heroes are like Nazis and Nazis are bad. You're not gonna get that context when you have journalists who are going through hundreds and hundreds of video just going like, okay, Hitler? Did you include Hitler? Okay, yeah, it doesn't matter the context. He also gains trust when he often defends those he does not agree with. While watching that video will make me angry, if we don't allow that to exist in the world, well that flag doesn't necessarily represent everything that I want it to represent. The freedom isn't freedom if you constantly are drawing lines in the sand as far as what you can criticize or what you can disrespect. When you see someone doing something with free speech that you don't agree with, you use your own free speech. Phil meets with people that do not necessarily share the same political views as him, and the conversation is decent. He has refused to monetize on a number of tragedies despite knowing these videos will get millions of views. And whereas most channels will not comment on the action of friends, Phil has done this multiple times. Now, before moving forward, because I feel like it is always very important to be transparent, I am friendly with Ethan from H3H3. So I wanted to let you know that so you have all the information, but know that that will not change how I cover this story. Though some may not agree with his opinions, I think his diehard fans realize this and support him anyway due to trust. Phil sometimes presents ideas that may be opposite to ours, but that's okay and we should be open 
to that. In a time where the like algorithm has created massive bubbles in America, it's important to support creators like Phil. Platforms like Facebook and YouTube haven't done this deliberately, but individuals only click what they want to see. The algorithm then recommends videos that are similar to this, feeding the individual only information he slash she agrees with, which can create an extremist opinion. We are rarely hit with information that disagrees with our beliefs, and when we are, we often refuse to listen and respond back with anger. That's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched. All right, I'm done. <laughs>